Five, four, three, two, one. This isn't a film about war. This isn't a film about Iraq. It's a film about money. That's life. That's life. That's what all Twenty-three billion dollars. Wasted, stolen, embezzled, or just lost down the back of a very big sofa in the desert. Tonight we're following the money. It's cost plus baby. And the more they bill, the more they make. Halliburton. Proud to serve our troops. They are the quintessential war profiteers. They made money out of chaos. Some people, get Some people tried to get the money back. That's the way they saw me, as a troublemaker, as a skunk at the picnic. But the $23 billion question now is will the whole truth about the profits of war ever come out? Sad to say, I'm not allowed to say. Iraq was a get-rich-quick opportunity that attracted some real chances. Scott Custer had been a soldier. He was descended from a more famous Custer, but Scott would be luckier than the general. Mike Battles had been a Republican Party candidate. That was a real door opener when it came to winning contracts. He was given special permission from a White House committee to go over as a civilian to Iraq and literally go door to door in the green zone asking government officials what kind of work that he could do. And he was able to do that simply because he was regarded as a friend of the Bush administration and for no other reason. Custer Battles had no experience of running big projects and only a few hundred bucks between them. But they won a $16 million contract. We're, we're guarding Baghdad International Airport. We do everything from the perimeter security to the luggage screening. It didn't take long for them to spot extra money-making opportunities. They found Iraqi Airways forklifts in the green and white Iraqi Airways colors. So what they did was they painted them over so that nobody could see that they were Iraqi Airways forklifts. And then they took these forklifts that they found at the airport and they leased them back to the U.S. government for $20,000 a month. $20,000 a month. For each, each one. That's right, each. Iraqis were rioting because the Americans couldn't distribute the new currency fast enough. Custer and Battles promised to get hold of trucks to ship the cash around. Another contract. They bought trucks in the local Baghdad market that simply didn't work. Lives were, in fact, put in danger. Uh, some of these trucks had brakes that failed. With each one of these trucks carrying $15 million worth of currency, you were left with a, a $15 million target sitting in the middle of the road, and it couldn't be moved. Mike Battles was summoned to meet American officials. There was a row and he stormed out, but left behind his briefcase. Inside were spreadsheets showing how the Cayman Islands scam magically turned their real costs of $3 million into 10. I think of Custer Battles as the, the poster child of early contracting abuse. Custer Battles won $100 million worth of contracts in the first year after the invasion and Bob Isaacson hired a lawyer. Hello, this is Lieutenant Kojak, Manhattan South. Yes, I need a DA to prepare a warrant. They had been given uh, a contract to spend anything they wanted, buy anything they want. They'd be able to mark that up 25%, but that wasn't good enough for them. They were just too greedy. They are the quintessential war profiteers. They made money out of chaos. This anti-war Democrat and lawyer is key to the campaign questioning those profits of war. 
He represents whistleblowers from all over America with hair-raising stories to tell of fraud and mismanagement. I keep a close watch on this heart of mine. I keep my eyes wide open all the time. The country's been kept in the dark about just how much money has disappeared in a war in which private contractors ended up outnumbering soldiers. Government lawyers have put gagging orders on no fewer than 70 cases. Do they involve big American contractors? I'm not allowed to say. But we've discovered the gagging orders involve some of the biggest names in corporate America. Does it involve KBR and Halliburton? Well, you have to understand, if there's a gag order in place, that gag order applies not only to the whistleblowers, but it applies to me as well. So I'm literally not allowed to say. What about Parsons, for example, another big contractor? I'm not allowed to say. And Bechtel? Sad to say, I'm not allowed to say. So would it be fair to say, to deduce, that there are most of the major American contractors involved in cases which are sealed and which we effectively can't talk about? That would be a fair inference. But I'm not allowed to say. The, the more that Halliburton claims to spend, the more it can bill to the government. As uh, one of our clients uh, testified uh, before Congress, one, her boss told her, don't worry about it, it's cost plus baby. And the more they bill, the more they make. Halliburton, proud to serve our troops. Alan Grayson, the whistleblower's lawyer, will be fighting his war for many years to come. Some would say you've stood for Congress as a Democrat. You have a political axe to grind, and that's why you attack the Bush administration over this question of contract fraud. I think that uh, if anybody, any human being, kn knew what I know about the war in Iraq, uh, they would feel the same way about the war in Iraq as I do. Uh, the only people who have actually benefited from the war in Iraq are the Iranians, Al-Qaeda, and Halliburton. The outcomes there, as everyone knows, have been mixed, but it's taken a while and it's been a tough process. The Iraqi people don't have electricity, even in Baghdad, most of the time. They don't have safe drinking water. But the money that's gone into waste, fraud, and abuse under these contracts is just so outrageous, it's so egregious. It, uh, it, uh, it may well uh, turn out to be the, the largest war profiteering in history. U.S. and Iraqi government agencies have come up with a series of figures for what's been stolen, what's missing, and not properly accounted for. We've pieced them together. That's life. That's life. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April and shut down in May. But I know I'm gonna change that too. When I'm back on top, back on top in June, I said that's life. That's life. And it's funny as it may seem. Some people get their kicks stomping on a dream. But I don't.